Again, this is your servant, Apostle Robertson Duje, here for another session of Bible study. So we thank God. We give him praise, honor, and glory and majesty. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Now, let's just get right into it. We're going to start praying. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor and majesty, God, because there is none like you. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and, and your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do and what you continue to do in our midst and our lives, Father God. Lord, as we come in your presence today, your word that says that men shall not leave of bread alone, but of every word that proceeded forth out of your mouth. And Father, today we come to steady, to show ourselves approved, on, on, approved unto you, God. We ask, Father, that you will give us a receptive spirit, that we may receive your word, O oh God, that they will fall onto good ground and that they will bear fruit. Father, open our understanding understanding in our mind God that we may receive your word today and have clarity and clarification father we give you praise hallelujah take control of our mind our soul take control of our lips our mouth every word that will be spoken father God will be spoken for your glory and that the doctrine that will be taught will be sound doctrine God we give you praise hallelujah we give you honor my God and we magnify your name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, there is none like our Lord Most High. He is great. Yeah. So uh, get with me to the book of Revelation. I'm just going to read that off of, my, uh, uh, off of my phone right now so that we can get right into, um, into our study. As it is uh, the way that we usually do it, we're just going to go ahead and start reading Revelation chapter 8 and we'll get right into it. So the Bible says... And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were, giving, were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should, that he should offer it with the prayer of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended ended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thundering and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound up. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire, mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures uh, which were in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships uh, were destroyed uh, and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp uh, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters uh, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, Wormwood uh, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood uh, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Uh, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, having uh, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Again, we want to thank God for you, for being, 
for joining us in today as we are going to continue with Revelation chapter 8. I mean, from the beginning last week, there, there are so many information that was given, so many things that have been covered all the way. When we looked at uh, Revelation chapter 8, it talked about the seven seals and it talked about the silence that was about the pace of half an hour. And we have explained to you through biblical resources and Bible verses by our scriptures that we have gone through. We've explained to you that the half hour is not necessarily uh, a literal half hour uh, and like I said we have taken many examples and we have dived into it so there's no reason for us to uh, go and repeat ourselves <clears throat> If you have missed uh, 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 the Bible study last Wednesday, you can always go on our YouTube channel. By the way, I will ask you to please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's DCBN, and you should see it right under our screen. Please go on YouTube and, and subscribe and hit the bell, so that way you can always get notification. On there, we have all the books of Revelation and many other Bible studies about the doctrines of Satan, Satan and demons. We, I mean, there are many Bible studies that we have covered on there so far, so it will be a great tool for you. Uh, to, to be able to enhance your knowledge and gain understanding of the word. So we're not going to go ahead and repeat ourselves again. Just go and, um, and watch the previous videos that we've had, uh, Revelation chapter 8, part 1, and you, you will uh, have more information. And it talked about the seven angels that stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And we also talk about the uh, angel that, that had the... <coughs> that stood at the altar having the golden censer and we've explained all of that and remember we told you clearly that the book of revelation hallelujah is 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 to be taken in three different aspects literally uh, prophetically and symbolically so as you read the book of Revelation we need to understand when God is speaking on a prophetic standpoint when he's speaking on a literal standpoint and when he's speaking on in a symbolic standpoint so all of those are very important so that's why when you read the Bible you need to ask God for understanding and we spoke about the smoke of the incense the prayers of the saints that were released there how the angel took the uh, uh, the censer and filled it with fire and threw it into the earth. And we spoke about the mountain, uh, uh, the, the, the rock, the size of the mountain that, the, that they threw into uh, the earth. And all of those things we have covered. And right now, uh, let's see here. Okay, we have covered that also when we talked about hell and fire. And we've taken an example in the book of Exodus chapter 9 verses 22 to 25. Because what happens when God began to deal, begins to deal with the, with the inhabitants of the earth, uh, you will see that many of the plagues that are released on earth every time that a trumpet is sounded, you can always make, make reference to, to some things that God have done in the past, especially in the Old Testament. Like for example... Uh, 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 in the book of Revelation, chapter eight, verse two, when he talk, when when he talks about hell and fire that fell from heaven. Uh, we made reference to the book of Exodus chapter 9, 22 and 25. Remember when God was, was basically pouring his wrath upon the, uh, the, the people of Egypt. Uh, uh, when God was telling Pharaoh, let my people go. And one of the pleas that was listed there also was the same thing. Hell and fire came down from heaven, the same as Sodom and Gomorrah. So now God is using the same uh, punishment to uh, in the book of Revelation chapter 8 as he's about to pour out uh, his judgment upon the inhabitants of the earth and one of the things that I want to make clear before I continue and on every Bible study uh, chapter that we've looked at I'm always mentioning this because I want to make sure that it sticks to your mind you know, there are many different religions and, that, and denominations out there. They are talking about pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation. Basically, what that is, is that people are saying that uh, the people with the post-tribulation, they're, they're saying that the, the church will be raptured after that the tribulation uh, uh, is taking place. Basically, all of those uh, breaking of seals and, and vows and, and woes that are going to take place, that the church will be part of it. And you have the mid trib uh, I'm sorry, not only will they be part of it, but, you know, they're, they're going to experience the whole thing. And mid-tribulation is that they're saying that the church will be part of it. And while this is happening, then the church will be raptured. But pre-tribulation is stating that we believe specifically that the church will be raptured according to Revelation chapter 3 on and 4 and First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16. That the Bible clearly states that God himself, Jesus Christ, at the sound of the trumpet, he will come. And once the trumpet is sounded, then we, the people of God, the church of Christ, the, the 
bride of Jesus Christ, we will be taken and then at that point the tribulation will begin. And remember I said to you before also that the devil is so cunning and so patient that he doesn't mind to wait. And remember I tell you, it is best that you that, that you are afraid of someone who's waiting years and thousands of years you know, for his plan to come into effect versus somebody who is quick to react. The devil is so patient. He is that type of person. He waits for thousands and thousands of years orchestrating his plan. And here is the thing, because what happens right now as it is, because the church is still on earth, the, the church is still active, is, is still effective on earth, so there is no way that Satan himself, he will come and, and claim himself to be the Messiah, the and, and as we know him, the Antichrist. The reason why is because we the believers, with the word of God, with the wisdom and the knowledge of God and the spirit of God that is in us, he knows that we will be a great opposition to him. So now he has to wait until the church is taken when Jesus Christ comes and he removes the church from the earth and now everyone that is left behind, those people are the ones that did not believe in Christ. Those people are the ones that have no knowledge of the word of God and now that gives an open door for the enemy because remember when the rapture happens, there's going to be chaos on earth because many people are going to be missing and, and, and you know the governments and you know throughout the world and many other agencies and people, they're going to start wondering and asking questions. They're going to say maybe it's you UFOs and all of those things because they won't be able to figure it out and at that point it leaves an open door for the devil to come to come and when he come in he's going to come in with one religion he's going to come in with one politic one government one one currency system so that everybody will fall under his umbrella and they're going to believe in him and now he's going to sit on uh, uh, um in the temple on the throne of God in Jerusalem, hallelujah, and he's going to proclaim a peace, and that peace supposedly for seven years, but between the first three years and a half, that peace will be broken, and people's eyes will begin to be open, and now they're going to begin to see that they were deceived by the enemy, and that Satan was not in, in, indeed, uh, hallelujah, the Messiah, so at that point, there is no reason for someone to believe in mid-tribulation or in post-tribulation, if I make sense now here, because the church will be raptured before all of those pleagues, before the trumpets sound, before the vows are released on earth, before the, the woes are released on earth, the church will not take part of this. Amen, somebody. Alright, so we uh, given the example of hell and fire, we've covered Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 22 um, and you can go ahead and read it on your own. Like I said, it's just a review before we even get into where we left off last week and uh, we took the example of Saddam and Gomorrah. Now looking at the second trumpet that sounded in Revelation chapter 8 verses uh, 8 and 9, the Bible says, And the second angel sounded, and it were a great mountain burning with fire, which was cast into the sea, and in the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, and had life, they died, and the third part of the ship they were destroyed. Now remember the ocean plays a huge role when it comes to uh, uh, in, in relation to us as humans because you know uh, um, how can I put it uh, uh, many many fish will die because of that one mountain and we, we explained to you what that mountain is last week. Explained to you that it's not a literal mountain because when God is judging a nation because that mountain is symbolic to a nation, okay, somebody, when you look at uh, Exodus chapter 7, verses 20, 21, the image of judgment is also patterned after the Egyptian plague, uh, and when the Nile was turned into blood, and speaking of Babylon coming to judgment, Jeremiah also, he had prophesied in chapter 51, verse 52, he said, behold, I am against the or destroying mountain. So when God speaks of a mountain here, that a mountain will, he will, the mountain will fall into the sea. Basically, it is a judgment, the judgment of God that is going to come and God refers to nations as mountain in the Bible. When you look at Jeremiah 51, 25, he says it, O destroy mountain, saith the Lord which destroyeth all the earth, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. That's Jeremiah 51, verse 25. And remember also the first prophecy that Daniel gave concerning the statue with different metals and gold and, 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 and bronze and all of of those uh, um, 
uh, 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 divisions that there was in that statue, the stone that striked the image became what? A great mountain. Okay, so that feels the whole earth symbolizing a burning volcano or anything like that. A nation in that context is being judged. Okay, so when God says a great mountain is thrown into the sea, it is not referring to a literal mountain, but it's it is symbolic and it's referring to a nation. So a nation here is going to be judged and this trumpet also affect a third continuing to show that partiality that partial judgment that is unfolding against the against this nation remember hallelujah when the seals began to when i'm sorry when the trumpets began to blow every trumpet that sound the first four trumpets deal specifically in a partiality uh, uh aspect whereby god is dealing uh with portion of the earth portion of the inhabitants portion of the trees portion of the sea and all of those things so just keep that in mind okay so God's judgment is is partial and it's not complete it's not the full judgment at that point because God is dealing uh, uh, on a term to term basis if I may put it this way with the inhabitants of the earth at that point so the third trumpet that sounded on verse 10 and 11 we're going to look at that real quick the Bible says and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and and upon the fountains and waters and verse 11 says uh, uh, and the name of the star is called uh, wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made uh, bitter so when in the when the third sound of the trumpet sounded the great star fell from heaven and blazing like a torch and it fell on a third part and i'm sorry on a third of the rivers and the springs of the waters and the name of the great star that fell was called wormwood so now that term that terminology that we have to analyze to understand clearly what the bible is trying to tell us what is apostle john seeing right now what is jesus christ revealing to the apostle John that's what we need to understand okay wormwood basically was a plant okay so we're gonna go back so you understand wormwood was a plant with a bitter taste that was found in the Palestine at that time so this bitter plant is used watch this a few times by the prophets in speaking about Jerusalem, Jeremiah, he declared in those messages, and I'm going to read that for you, Jeremiah chapter 9, 15, listen to this. He says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them with this, even this people, with warm wood, okay, and give them water of gall to drink Jeremiah chapter 9 15 now look at Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 15 it said therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts uh, concerning the prophets behold I will give them with wormwood I will, I'm sorry I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the waters of gall for from the prophets of Jerusalem is, prof is profaneness gone forth into the land Jeremiah chapter 23 15 and also chapter 9 verse 15 so jeremiah used the picture of wormwood to show that the punishment fits the crime okay so now remember the punishment of god is just because he is a just god he is a righteous god every punishment that he gives it it, it is it, it fits hallelujah the the, the crime it fits the sin, and, and, and in that context also, it, the, the punishment that God is pouring in, in Revelation chapter 8 here that we just read, it basically fits the crime that the inhabitants of the earth has committed. And remember, God is dealing on a partial term of with the people, with the, the inhabitants of the earth. So the suffering, watch this, will be bitter because they are bitter, because they are, uh, uh, because of their bitter wickedness let me say it again so the suffering will be bitter because of their bitter wickedness so jeremiah spoke of the prophets polluting israel with idolatry so therefore god was polluting them with bad waters and the bitterness of suffering okay so the springs of waters is an important judgment and it's commonly used in the Old Testament because most of Judah's waters came from a natural spring. So therefore, 
bitter suffering is coming upon the earth according to verse 11 on on, on uh, chapter 8 uh, it reveals that many people would die from these judgments so once that judgment fall according to revelation 8 chapter 10 and 11 once that judgment falls amen somebody and the star that will fall from heaven called wormwood when it falls onto the earth and the inhabitants of the earth then it will the the the, the, the waters will become bitter and many people will die from it uh, going on to Revelation chapter, I'm sorry, going on to Revelation chapter eight, verse twelve. Looking at the fourth uh, uh, trumpet that will sound, <clears throat> the Bible says, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten. Now, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the star, so as the third part of them. Uh, was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it not and likewise now before I even get into this real quick there is something very important that I want to cover with you when you go back to the book of Revelation the Bible says I'm sorry not Revelation when you go back to the book of Genesis uh, in the time of creation the Bible says on the fourth day and when we, when we look at the biblical meaning of, of numbers, you come to realize that number four, it means order. So that is why on the fourth day that God created the big lights, okay? He created the sun, he created the moon, and he created all the stars. So the sun was to give us light during the day, and the, the, the moon and the stars were to give us, are to give us light during the night. But these were not only the, per these were not the only purpose is why God had created the big lights. So when you look further, as you continue to read in, in the book of Genesis, the Bible also says that these lights are also created as signs, my God, of things to come. So that's why, watch this, whenever something is going to happen, you will always see that there is an eclipse, uh, whether a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse. And a lot of time people are so fascinated by it that they don't even realize that God is trying to give us a warning. Okay, so uh, just recently the solar eclipse that took place, I think it was about a year or so, something like that. It means that something is going to take place. God is warning us. Whenever you see uh, a lunar eclipse, even like when you look at the blood moon, scientists try to explain it uh, based on the position that the moon is in, com in, in, in comparison to the sun. You know, the dimension when you study obliques, whatever they call it, then they say that's what would create, you know, the red color of the moon which we call you know the blood moon depending on the position of the moon and all that so it's, it's good information to know that they try to go on you know doing their study and, and figuring out how exactly it works and why it happened but the the, the 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 important thing about this is to understand that whenever you see those things happen because remember God is the creator of the universe things does not happen accidentally things does not happen by coincidence God orchestrate for those things to happen specifically for a reason and whenever you hear of a lunar eclipse i don't care if it's a blood moon whenever you hear of a solar eclipse people just take on their you know their glasses you know so that they can look up and see the moon i've done it too okay but we need to understand that god is trying to give us a warning of something that is to happen okay so now Whenever you hear next lunar or solar eclipse, then just keep that in mind. You can just make reference to the book of Genesis and go read it on your own. On the fourth day, you will see what God says. Now, going back to this here, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 8, verse 12, that the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten. Okay, the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as a third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So therefore, basically what they're saying is that the sun is not going to give the amount of light that it used to anymore, because the sun will be smitten, and then there will be one third of the, of the brightness of the sun that will be reduced so the sun is not gonna be the same anymore and so will it be for the moon as well as the stars okay so now 
Let me just go back to this here. I'm going ahead of myself. So when the fourth trumpet sounded, uh, uh, chapter two, uh, chapter 8, verse 12, explained it clearly. And now uh, the fourth trumpet sounds, and a third of the sun, the moon, and the stars are struck, so that as a third of their light is darkened. So we learned also, by the way, in Revelation chapter 6, I believe verses 11, uh, 11 through 14, that the sun no longer shines. When you make reference to Revelation chapter 6, it says that the sun never shines, the moon becoming like blood, just like we were saying, go read Revelation chapter 6, you will see that. And the stars falling from the sky are symbols of the final judgment on a nation. So those things reveal clearly that God is getting nearer to his final judgment, but it is not the final judgment yet because God is dealing on a partial level with the inhabitants of the earth. So in Revelation chapter 8 verse 12, we again see only a third of these celestial bodies, meaning the, you know, the lights, you know, are being struck. So therefore this is not like we say the final judgment is just a, a judgment on it's just a partial judgment. It's on a partiality uh, level and and, and it's not the great tribute. It's I'm sorry, the great tribulation. It's not the final judgment. It's the great tribulation. So on part of the earth, this is the great tribulation, like we said, but not the final judgment. Now let's look at the final verse on this. Like I said, this was going to be a very quick, you know, set of Bible study because we've covered much, much part of, of Revelation chapter eight uh, last Wednesday. So now we're just finishing this, so that way next week we can go right into Revelation chapter nine. Things are going to get more interesting. Now remember, before I even cover Revelation chapter eight, ver the last verse, I remember before. Uh, when I first read Revelation, the book of Revelation, I read the entire book and it was, you know, back in, I don't remember clearly, like 1998, 1997, somewhere around that area. You know, I, I was very, very, very scared. I was very scared of the book of Revelation. And since that day when I read it, I put it down. I never touched it again because I got so scared about it. But the thing is that you see the Lord reveal those things to his children so that we can know and prepare ourselves now remember i said to you that the church will not partake in the great tribulation because the church will be raptured first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 the church will be raptured before the great tribulation takes place so therefore when you come to have that understanding then you are not scared anymore to read the book of revelation because we know that we are part of of the body of christ which when, when, when Christ comes, we will be taken with him. So now what you need to do, my dear brethren, my brothers and my sisters that are listening to me, you need to live every day of your life as if it's the last day. Because you don't know when the trumpet will sound. There is no angel that knows the day, the time, the date, the hour. Only God the Father that knows it. And in, in his own time, in his own term, he will, hallelujah, call that angel, Masokarabashandaya. To blow that trumpet and Jesus Christ, our Messiah, will come and meet us in the cloud. And those that are dead will come back to life. And us that are alive, we will meet up in the clouds with them. Our bodies will change from corruptible to incorruptible. And forevermore, we shall be with the Lord. And when we are with our Lord Jesus Christ from above, we can look and see the things that are happening and, and being unfold. According, uh, uh, when I say that, when you look at the things that are being explained, that John is explaining to was revelation he got from jesus christ in the book of revelation we're going to see those things unfolding but we're not going to be part of them okay so now looking at the voice of the angel in revelation chapter 8 verse 13 that's the last one we're going to look at here the bible says <clears throat> and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices hmm, of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound my god jesus so then john hears an angel okay and the angel is flying overhead i want to cover this very uh carefully with you here and the angel is crying oh my god i just closed this okay the angel is crying with a loud voice and three more woes are gonna be released Okay, three more woes are to come according to Revelation chapter thirteen, uh, chapter 8 verse uh, uh, 13 here. And those woes, if you thought that the first trumpets that were sounded, if you thought that those were something, despite uh, the destruction that, they that they're going to bring, if you think that this is something, wait until the three woes will sound. That's why I'm telling you by next week when we start getting more into those things, then you will see 
you know what what the apostle john is saying here so now with those trumpets woe to those who leave on the earth because the rest of the trumpet are about to sound and the angel is an image used by God as a harbinger of doom. Now we're going to look at that term right here, that terminology, we're going to look at it real quick. Uh, let me read Revelation chapter 8 verse 13 again. It says, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voice of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound now the old testament used eagle as a picture of destruction okay the bible listen the bible used eagle as a picture of destruction it's, it's funny because i see many uh, uh uh many ministries you know they take the symbol of an eagle and i understand where they're coming from you know they will saw like an eagle above the clouds above the you know, tribulation and things like that, you know, whatever you want to call it. But in most part, in the Old Testament, eagle is used as a symbol of destruction. And don't take my word for it. We're going to look at some, some Bible verses here. The Bible says in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 28, 49, 50, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 49 through 50. This angel can also be looked in the same manner. The angel in the book of, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the angel in the book of Revelation chapter 8, 13, that angel can also be looked in the same manner. Okay, in Ezekiel chapter 17, we read the parable of two eagles. And the message of the parable was uh, Babylon was the eagle destroying Jerusalem. You can go read it, Ezekiel chapter 17. Babylon was an eagle <clears throat> uh, destroying Jerusalem. And Ezekiel's prophecy rests on God's on God's promise made at the inauguration of the nation of Israel. So God promised curses on Israel if they disobey. Remember when God mentioned that if you obey, these are the blessings that will follow. If you if you disobey, basically there's going to be a reverse. Every blessing is going to be turned into a curse. So therefore you're going to get the opposite and there will be a curse for your disobedience. So God clearly promised curses unto Israel if they happen to disobey. And now one of the images of this curse was found in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49 that a foreign nation would destroy them swooping down like an eagle. Okay, so John in Revelation chapter 8 sees an eagle flying overhead declaring woes upon the nations as the rest of the judgment are about to be executed. All right, so uh, basically uh, this covers uh, Revelation chapter 8. Again, uh, um, like I always say to you, um, we are going through this whole series of Rev of the book of Revelation. But in the meantime, if you happen uh, to to be struggling with a specific topic in the Bible and you would like for us to uh, cover it in one of our Bible study, we can always put Revelation to the side for one Wednesday and just cover that specific topic. And we thank God for this one person that mentioned, uh, I believe a couple of Wednesdays ago, we got a message and the person wanted us to talk about Satan and demons, their origin. So we went ahead and did a Bible study on it. And if you go on YouTube, you will find that study. It's right there. Uh, we've covered it all. And uh, if you have anything in the Bible, by the grace of God, if we if we know it, uh, we will tell you what it is. If God reveals it, we will explain it to you and tell you. But if we don't know it, we're not going to sit here and lie to you and try to fabricate something to tell you that we know is not biblical. I'm not that type. If I don't know it, I'll tell you straight up I don't know it. Some people, they are so boastful and so prideful that they do not, they, they, they don't really admit, you know, their limit. But me, myself, I deal with what God gives me and I thank the Lord for the knowledge and the understanding that it gives, which I do not mind and I gladly share with you all. So feel free to to send me an inbox on Facebook or on YouTube, or write a comment, let me know what you want us to study about, and we're definitely going to go ahead and cover that. If we don't have any requests at that point, uh, next Wednesday, we're just going to go ahead and cut and continue on with the book of Revelation chapter 9, because tonight we just put an end to Revelation chapter 8, and I pray that this study is a blessing to you, and that your, your understanding and knowledge is being increased throughout this Bible study, and if anything, like I said, you don't understand, feel 
feel free to give us a call or send us a message for the glory of God. Please remember to uh, share this video, give it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you can always be notified whenever there is a new uh, uh, you know, video that we upload for the glory of God. And many times we go live too, so uh, just uh, make sure that you subscribe. At this point, we're going to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace, your mercy, and your love and kindness. Thank you, Father, for the understanding of your word. Thank you for your knowledge and wisdom. Thank you, Father, for you have hidden those things to the wise and you have revealed them to your children. Oh God, everyone that is listening to me right now, even on the other side of the screen, Father, begin to touch them and heal them. I release a blessing upon them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask that sound doctrine now will be their portion in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I give you praise, glory, and honor. I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for the provision. I thank you for the healing. I thank you, hallelujah, Father God, for the increase in the finances, oh Lord. I thank you for the anointing and your spirit that is in us, O oh God, most high. Continue to keep us safe, O oh Lord. Uh, continue to keep us in all obedience and humility towards you, Father God, uh, that we may continue to do your will in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty Holy Ghost name. Amen and amen, amen. Hallelujah. So people, tonight that concludes our Bible study with Revelation chapter 8. Again, like we say next week, we're going to cover Revelation chapter 9. Again, with you was your humble servant, Apostle Robert. Sunduja, y'all have a great day. God bless you all, and I will see you next Wednesday.